Thomas Hobbes and John Locke. This interview you are about to witness contains valuable information from John Locke in heaven and Thomas Hobbes from the depths of hell. Their contrasting views on human rights, natural law, and organization of government define them as two major players during the time period. I, Harrison Richland, was delighted to be in their presence and ask them about their views and more about them. Sit back and enjoy. I'm here with John Locke today, a famous English philosopher of the Enlightenment. So, Mr. Locke, tell me, what did you achieve that made you a major player during the Enlightenment? Well, I'm very glad you asked. I became most famous when I wrote my book, Essay Concerning Human Understanding. This intellectual book describes humans as being born with a blank slate. Through their experiences in life, people develop their character and intuition. Another of my major achievements was in writing two treatises of government. This book was more on the political side and addressed the issues of natural rights, which are life, liberty, and property, and that it is a ruler's job to protect these rights and fulfill his obligation to the public. What were some of your major ideas that characterized you as a philosopher? Well, I had a good heaping deal of ideas. I believe that humans in their natural state, without government, live with peace and equality, without war. In this natural state, they have certain unquestionable rights. These rights are life, liberty, and property. Thus, there is a sort of contract between the people and the government, whose job is to protect these rights of the people and listen to them as well. If the government does not do their part correctly, then the people have the right to overthrow them. All of your ideas sound very political. Tell me some more about some of your intellectual ideas. Okay. I believe that all humans are born with a blank slate of mind. With every day that goes by, they experience new people, ideologies, and events. These occurrences, therefore, uniquely mature their minds and make them into the person that they are later on in life. All of your ideas sound very political. Tell me some more about your intellectual ideas. Well, most of my ideas fit right in with those of the other philosophers. During the Enlightenment, we intellectuals were questioning society and its ways. Thus, I came up with my books, Essay Concerning Human Understanding and Two Treatises of Government. I figured I would focus my efforts and studies on government and the mind so as to be able to put more time and effort into my work. Many of my ideas clash with those of Thomas Hobbes, such as our contrasting views on humans and their state of nature. I viewed humans as peaceful and equal, whereas he viewed them as warlike and savage. Okay, now that I've heard all of your accomplishments and ideas, tell me why these are important to the Enlightenment and what impact they had on Europe. My ideas were important to the Enlightenment because they influenced philosophy and political theory in too many ways for me to explain. My ideas were groundbreaking for that time, and thus they were very important to the Enlightenment. I had a very strong influence on many subjects and people. Many say that I had a very strong influence on modern liberalism. I also strongly affected the ideas of Locke, who called me Les Sages Locke, and the Founding Fathers of America. As well, Many say that my essay concerning human understanding marks the beginning of the modern Western conception of the self. Hi, we're here with Thomas Hobbes. It's an honor to have you with us today. Thank you. It's nice to be here. Thank you for having me again, Harrison. Well, our views on men and life and government should be justified by absolutism. That is the way, I believe and natural law must be used. Divine right is not acceptable in our way, just the way. And the government should protect life. And a social contract should be made between man and government. While the government holds a strong and powerful place, that's about it. So your views are obviously very important during the scientific revolution. Why were you such an important political figure during this time? Well, my views were quite new to society and it, they provided a different way to approach government and new leadership 
for our people, for our life. Well, the views on authoritarianism lately influenced Adolf Hitler, as his government was one of the most powerful in the history of the world. So, Mr. Hans, what are your views on John Locke? Locke. John Locke. His views on government are rubbish. Bloody rubbish. They're wrong. You cannot possibly be so free. As I said in the Leviathan, a free man is a wild man. An insane man cannot be tolerated in a government. So, Mr. Hobbs, what is your book The Leviathan about? Well, my book The Leviathan concerns the structure of society and government. I argue that the leadership in the country should be by absolute sovereign. I also wrote famously in my book that life without government is nasty, brutish, and short. Mr. Hobbs, where did you get your education from? Well, I got my degree from Oxford. I got a bachelor's degree. Okay, Mr. Hobbs, thank you for being here today. It was an honor having you. You're welcome. It was a pleasure.